ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯನ್ ಖರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಮೇಕ್ ಶೂರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಾಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ to our Bhagavad Gita class we continue in chapter 3 Karma Yoga we'll begin by reciting several verses please uh, glance at the meaning and then repeat after me we'll start with the verse 18 Naiva tasya krite narto Naiva tasya krite narto na krite neha kashchana ನೃತೆ ನೇಹ ಕಶ್ಚನ ನಾಸ್ಯಸೂತು ನಾಸ್ಯೂತು ಕಶ್ಚಿರ್ಥವ್ಯಪಾಶ್ರಯ ಕಶ್ಚಿರ್ಥವ್ಯಪಾಶ್ರಯ ತಸ್ಮಸಕ್ತ ಸತತ ತಸ್ಮಸಕ್ತ ಸತತ ಕಾರ್ಯಂ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮಾಚರ ಕಾರ್ಯಂ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮಾಚರ ಅಸಕ್ತೋ ಹ್ಯಾಚರನ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಅಸಕ್ತೋ ಹ್ಯಾಚರನ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಪರಮಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಪುರುಷ ಪರಮಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಪುರುಷ ಕರ್ಮ ನೈವಿ ಸಂಸಿ ಕರ್ಮ ನೈವಿ ಸಂಸಿ ಆಸ್ತಿಥನಕಾದಯ ಆಸ್ತಿಥನಕಾದಯ ಲೋಕಸಂಗ್ರಹ ಮೇ ವಾಪಿ ಲೋಕಸಂಗ್ರಹ ಮೇ ವಾಪಿ ಸಂಪಶ್ಯನ್ ಕರ್ತು ಮರ್ಹಸಿ ಸಂಪಶ್ಯನ್ ಕರ್ತು ಮರ್ಹಸಿ ಯಾಚರತಿ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠಸ್ ಯಾಚರತಿ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠಸ್ ತೇತರೋ ಜನ ತೇತರೋ ಜನ ಸ ಯತ್ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಕುರು ಸ ಯತ್ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಕುರು ಲೋಕಸ್ಥರನುವರ್ತೆ ಲೋಕಸ್ಥರನುವರ್ತೆ ನ ಮೇ ಪಾರ್ಥಾಸ್ತಿ ಕರ್ತವ್ಯ ನ ಮೇ ಪಾರ್ಥಾಸ್ತಿ ಕರ್ತವ್ಯ ತ್ರಿಷು ಲೋಕೇಶು ಕೆಂಚನ ತ್ರಿಷು ಲೋಕೇಶು ಕೆಂಚನ ನಾನವಾಪ್ತಮವಾಪ್ತವ್ಯ ನಾನವಾಪ್ತಮವಾಪ್ತವ್ಯ ವರ್ತಹೇವಚಕರ್ಮಿ ವರ್ತಹೇವಚಕರ್ಮಿ ಯರಿ ಹ್ಯಹಂ ನ ವರ್ತೇಯ ಯರಿ ಹ್ಯಹಂ ನ ವರ್ತೇಯ ಜಾತು ಕರ್ಮನ್ಯತಂದ್ರತ ಜಾತು ಕರ್ಮನ್ಯತಂದ್ರತ ಮಮ ವರ್ತಮನುವರ್ತಂಥೆ ಮಮ ವರ್ತಾನುವರ್ತಂಥೆ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಪಾರ್ಥಸರ್ವಶ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಪಾರ್ಥಸರ್ವಶ ಉತ್ಸೀರೇಯುರಿ ಮೇ ಲೋಕ ಉತ್ಸೀರೇಯುರಿ ಮೇ ಲೋಕ ನ ಖುರ್ಯಾಂ ಖರ್ಮ ಛೇರಹಂ ನ ಖುರ್ಯಾಂ ಖರ್ಮ ಛೇರಹಂ ಸಂಖರ ಚರ್ಥಾಂ ಸಂಖರ ಚರ್ಥಾಂ ಉಪಹನ್ಯಾಮಿ ಮಾ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಉಪಹನ್ಯಾಮಿ ಮಾ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸಕ್ತ ಖರ್ಮನ್ಯ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸೋ ಸಕ್ತ ಖರ್ಮನ್ಯ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸೋ ಯಥಾಕುರ್ವಂತಿ ಭಾರತ ಯಥಾಕುರ್ವಂತಿ ಭಾರತ ಖುರ್ಯಾದ್ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸ್ ತಥಾ ಸಕ್ತ ಖುರ್ಯಾದ್ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸ್ ತಥಾ ಸಕ್ತ ಚಿಕ್ಷು ಲೋಕಸಂಗ್ರಹ ಚಿಕ್ಷು ಲೋಕಸಂಗ್ರಹ
Very good. Let us return to where we left off. We finished verse 19. Yes, yeah, so we'll begin today with verse 20. <coughs> the context, of course, is karma yoga in general, but karma yoga has several different aspects, and the particular aspect of karma yoga we're seeing here is Ishvara, Arpana, Buddhi, the Buddhi, the attitude of Arpana, offering our deeds, our actions, Ishvara unto God. The attitude of offering our actions unto God is then symbolized in our last class. We saw the symbolism quite extensively. The symbolism of a yajna, a fire ritual in which you make sacrificial offerings into the fire. And just as you make sacrificial offerings into a fire to worship Ishvara in the same way, we sacrifice our own agendas, set them aside for the sake of following Dharma. And that sacrifice of our own agenda is our offering of worship unto Ishvara. Um, before we continue with today's class, several questions came up with regard to the yajna. I mentioned before that in ancient times, yajna would be performed even to make the rains come at the proper time. Uh, because in ancient times they didn't understand the laws of nature, the laws of evaporation and precipitation that govern the rain. Um, but please don't jump to the conclusion that I said that yajnas don't work. I never said that. <laughs> I said that the yajnas were based on an ancient world view and we now have a modern scientific worldview, but that doesn't mean yajnas don't work. Yajna is a form of prayer, a form of worship. Any form of prayer or worship works insofar as a good karma, ritual worship, must produce a good pala, punya pala, a good result what we would loosely call a blessing. So the performance of those yajnas, even though they didn't mechanically manipulate the laws of nature, as they might have thought, um, nevertheless, those yajnas absolutely produced blessings for those who performed the, the rituals, and those blessings could certainly come in the form of rain, and the blessings could come in so many other ways as well. Okay, just to clear up that question, now we can continue <coughs> our text. Yeah. So Ishvara Arpana Buddhi continues to be discussed, but there's a shift of, of uh, focus here. Let's uh, proceed with verse 20. Karman he karman aiva hi sam siddhim karman aiva hi sam siddhim astita janakadaya astita janakadaya loka sangraha me vapi loka sangraha me vapi Sampashyan karatu marhasi. Sampashyan karatu marhasi. In the second line, Janaka adayaha. Janaka, etc. King Janaka was the king, the ruler of Mithila, the kingdom, the, the uh, father of Sita, famous in the um, Ramayana. What's significant about Janaka and he, his name? comes up again and again as an example of someone who remains fully engaged in worldly activities and is simultaneously enlightened. So King Janaka was an enlightened king, an enlightened ruler. I smile when I say that because I, we only wish that our rulers, our kings and presidents and prime ministers today, we wish <laughs> they were all enlightened. I think if countries would be ruled much better. Anyway, Janaka was an enlightened king, an enlightened ruler. And 
the point that's made here, this verse is often quoted to dismiss the notion that only monks, those who renounce the world, only monks, sannyasis, can become enlightened. Ironically, someone who takes to the life of a monk is actually deprived of the ability of doing most kinds of karma yoga. Someone who remains engaged in worldly life actually has the benefit of, of more opportunities for karma yoga, and that was certainly true for Janaka. So Janaka was, is the, the prototypical karma yogi. So he was a king performing his duties, while he was king, performing his duties as karma yoga, not just ruling the kingdom, but ruling the kingdom as karma yoga, he became enlightened through his practice of karma yoga and of course through the proper instruction of some rishis. So here it says Janaka uh, kings like Janaka, people who were engaged in worldly life like Janaka, Astitaha, they achieved, they abided in some siddhim in the first line. Some siddhim, perfection, enlightenment. And we can paraphrase this. Uh, those like Janaka attained enlightenment. How did they attain enlightenment? Karmana eva, breaking the two words apart. Karmana eva, very powerfully, Sri Krishna says, through action alone. And that eva kind of sticks out, action alone. And here he means to distinguish, he doesn't, please don't make the, under, the mistake that only karma yoga is required. You don't require the teachings of Vedanta or meditation or prayer or anything else. That's not what he is saying. Karmana eva by karma alone, as opposed to sannyasa, as opposed to living a life, life of, of a monk. So karmana eva by remaining engaged in worldly activities and performing karma yoga, some siddhim astita, they, they abided in perfection, they gained enlightenment. Who did Janaka Dayaha? Great people like Janaka. And they, loka sangraham evapi sampashyan, Oh, sorry, now, now, now Sri Krishna shifts his attention away from Janaka and towards Arjuna. So now he addresses Arjuna, oh Arjuna, in the last line, Sampashyan, keeping in view, keeping in view, Lok and a third line, loka sangraham. This is a beautiful word, often associated with Janaka. Sangraha here means has other meanings elsewhere, but sangraha here means welfare. Loka sangraha, welfare of the people. Obviously, King Janaka, as an enlightened king, was ruling not for his own personal interests but he was ruling for the welfare of all people who abided in his uh, kingdom. So loka sangraham is to take care of people. And here Sri Krishna ad addresses Arjuna, sampashyan, keeping in view loka sangraham, the welfare of people, kartum arhasi, O Arjuna, you should engage in action. In this case, you should engage in fighting the war. Engaging in fighting the war was, in Arjuna's case, for the sake of Loka Sangraha. Remember way back in chapter 1, we discussed at length how if Arjuna failed to fight in this war, the uh, Pandavas would lose, the Kauravas would, 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 would cause a reign of terror upon the people. The war for Arjuna, not fighting the war would cause far more harm than fighting the war. Therefore, for Arjuna to fight, it would actually produce 
loka sangraham. And here the idea for Arjuna, and, and remember our topic here is Ishvara Arpana Buddhi, the attitude of offering our deeds as a form of worship. So for Arjuna, he has to sacrifice his personal agenda. What is Arjuna's personal agenda? His personal agenda is to avoid killing his own family members and to run away from the battlefield so he doesn't have to engage in this terrible war. That's what he wants to do. Raga and Dvesha, his, his likes and dislikes, are pushing Arjuna to turn away from his duty on the battlefield and run away. But here, karma yoga for Arjuna is to set aside his own personal agenda and instead to do loka sangraham, to work for the welfare of all, and in this case, for Arjuna to move ahead onto the battlefield, is actually working for the sake of all, for the benefit of, the, of all. Um, a side comment before we continue. Um, merely doing loka sangraham is not karma yoga. Let's be very clear about that. Notice we said that Arjuna has to do this loka sangraha, setting aside his own agenda. This is karma yoga. Remember, karma yoga is to overcome raga dvesha by means of willpower. And by means of willpower, you set aside your own agenda. This makes it karma yoga. But there are many people who engage in Loka Sangraha, how about if I just say social work? Uh, there are many people who engage in various kinds of social work, social activists, who are driven partially by a, ne a, des a genuine desire to help others, but they're driven partially by their own egos. You know this. There are many social reformers and activists who are clearly driven, at least in part, by their own egos. To engage in loka sangraha for the sake of feeding your ego is certainly not karma yoga. Karma yoga is to set aside your own agenda and engage in loka sangraha, working for the benefit of others. Then, Yadyara charati shreshtas, Yadyara charati shreshtas, Tadda deve taro janaha, Tadda deve taro janaha, Sayat pramanam kurute, Sayat pramanam kurute, Locus taranu vartate. Lokas taranu vartate. Hmm. Here, um, Arjuna is, uh, Sri Krishna addresses Arjuna and encourages Arjuna to be a role model. Let me just talk about role model for a moment and then the verse will, will be more, uh, more clear. Um, Arjuna is the mightiest, arguably, Arjuna is the mightiest warrior out there on the battlefield. All the Pandavas know it, all the Kauravas know it. And, you know, somebody who who's really has achieved such a, an exalted position as the greatest warrior, such a person would naturally be considered a role model. Like it or not, Arjuna is a role model for many on the battlefield and perhaps many back at the in the kingdom as well. So imagine the harm that might be caused if Arjuna were to leave the battlefield as a role model. What kind of message would he be sending? So this is what Sri Krishna addresses here. He's, he says, Yat yat acharati shreshtas, shreshtas, 
the highest, the best, the most exalted of people, yad yad acharati, what such a person does, what that role model does, yad yad acharati, whatever actions are performed by that great m role model, tat tat eva, that indeed, itraha janaha. And you have to bring down the word acharati into the second line as well. Whatever the role model does, tat tat itaraha janaha, that too is performed by other people. It's actually in a singular number. Whatever is performed by, by a great person in a role who has a role model, another person will do the same, follow in the footsteps, so to speak. So here, Sri Krishna reminds Arjuna that Arjuna is that role model. Whatever a great person does, like Arjuna, other people will emulate the actions of the great person, which is what he says in the second half. Sayat pramanam kurute, saha kurute yat pramanam. Saha, that role model. Kurute pramanam. He sets the, and here pramanam, not, not in a technical sense. He sets a standard. That, in l that role model, that exalted person, pramanam kurute, becomes the standard, becomes the role model, becomes the standard, and lokas tadanuvartate, the standard which lokaha, other persons, anuvartate, follow. So the, per the great person becomes the standard that is followed by, by other people in the world. Arjuna is such a role model. And here Arjuna, Arjuna must fight. Arjuna must set aside his own personal agenda, set aside his, what, what his raga and dvesha are driving him to do, leave the battlefield. He has to use his willpower to set it aside. This is karma yoga. And he has to act for the welfare of others. And in doing so, he becomes that role model. Hmm. I have a little note here in the corner. Uh, it, the, the note is about the fact that there are very few role models today that we would follow you know, in, in the world stage, so to speak, in the news. I think we see very few examples of people who are so dharmic, so righteous, so noble, so people who, who are of such an exalted nature that they become the standard for us to follow. There are very few today which is all the more reason that you should, <laughs> you should be the role model. Don't depend on others to be a role model. You can be that role model. Okay, let's continue. Oh, so after talking about Arjuna as a role model, the next uh, three verses are talking about Sri Krishna as a role model. How is Krishna a role model? He explains. Name partasti kartavyam, Name partasti kartavyam, Trishulo keshu kenchana, Trishulo keshu kenchana, Nan of optum of optavyam, Nan of optum of optavyam, Varta heva chakarmani, Varta heva chakarmani. So when we're talking about Sri Krishna as a role model, here in this context, we're specifically talking about Sri Krishna as an avatara, as an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, as one who has come down to this earthly plane to, what is he doing? He's working for the sake of Loka Sangraha. You remember the... Uh, uh, what is it in chapter f in chapter four? Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. Where where Sri Krishna himself says, when dharma decays, 
and adharma rises, Sri Krishna says, I incarnate myself again and again. I come to this earthly plane to help. I to, in the next verse he goes on to say, I, I come to bless the good people and to punish the not so good people. And he says that for that purpose I take birth and to reestablish dharma in each age. And these two verses in chapter 4 are quite famous. We'll see those uh, fairly soon. So here, um, as an avatara, Shri, as an incarnation of God, avatara, lit you might know, literally means one who has descended. Avatara means descent. So one who has descended from the heavens, so to speak, for the sake of the upliftment of mankind for the sake of loka sangraha. That's our topic. So Sri Krishna here, as an avatara, is engaged in loka sangraha, and as such he too is a role model. But he says here, uh, uh, Sri Krishna says here, um, Name parta parta o arjuna me for me Na asti kartavyam. There is nothing for me to do. There is nothing that remains for me to be done. There is nothing that I want to do. Maybe just to loosely paraphrase it. Trishu lokeshu. In all the three worlds, there is nothing, kinshana at all, there is nothing at all that I want to do. There is no compulsion of raga and dvesha driving Sri Krishna. Of course, he's enlightened. He's not driven by Raga Dvesha. So he's explaining how, remember in the last class, we said that the karma yogi uses will to overcome Raga Dvesha, whereas the enlightened person is naturally and spontaneously free from Raga Dvesha. So in our prior verse, Arjuna had to use his will to overcome his Raga Dvesha for the sake of performing Loka Sangraha, taking care of other people. Here, Sri Krishna says that he's not driven by, by Raga Dvesha, he's enlightened. So his first half he says, there's nothing for me in all the three worlds. There's nothing at all for me to accomplish, meaning there's no Raga Dvesha driving him. In the third line, he continues, Na anavaptam avaptavyam. He says, Na, there is not anavaptam, anything which is not gained, which is avaptavyam, which must be gained. Usually, uh, what, I've used the example before of a to-do list. He says there's nothing that should be gained that I need to gain, nothing that I want to gain, that I have to gain. His to-do list is empty, <laughs> blank. And as I said in the last class, that's the status of the enlightened person. That sense, I think I used the word krita kritya the state of having accomplished everything that needs to be accomplished. This is the state of the enlightened person. This is the state of Sri Krishna. So he says, there's nothing at all that I am compelled to do by Raga Dvesha. But now watch what he says here at the end. Varta Eva, by the way, the breaking apart the words Varte. I do. I am engaged, eva indeed, karmani, in action, varte eva cha karmani, yet I am engaged in action. Sri Krishna says here that he's not driven by raga dvesha, but it doesn't mean he just sits passively. He's not driven by raga dvesha, but he, f he naturally and spontaneously is engaged in acts of dharma, in acts of loka sangraha, caring for other person. This is what's characteristic of an enlightened person. An enlightened person, no longer driven by raga dvesha, naturally and spontaneously follows dharma 
and following dharma is often evidenced as, as doing loka sangraha, caring for other people. Sri Krishna continues to explain this. He says, Yadi hyaham navarteyam, Yadi hyaham navarteyam, Jatu karman yatandritaha, Jatu karman yatandritaha, Mama vartmanu vartante, Mama vartanu vartante, Manusya parta sarvashaha, Manusya parta sarvashaha. So now Sri Krishna speaks of himself as a role model. He says, Yadi, if, and you have to break apart the words he and aham. He, indeed, yadi, if, aham, I, Sri Krishna speaking, yadi, aham, if I, navarteyam, if I did not engage in the middle of the second line, karmani, in any action, in action, jatu, in any kind of action whatsoever. If I failed to be engaged in action, atandrataha, I who am, the literal meaning of atandrita is one who is not lazy. So Sri Krishna is not lazy. It has another meaning of like continuously. And maybe that meaning, I, translation here says relentlessly, that meaning might fit a little bit better here. So if constantly, so if I were constantly to fail to be engaged in any kind of action whatsoever, then what would be the consequence? He's a role model. Sri Krishna is a role model. And if this role model were not to be engaged in loka sangraha, what would be the consequence? Mama vartma anuvartante manushyaha. In the last line, manushyaha, people. In the third line, anuvartante, people would follow. People would follow what? Mama Vartma, my path, my behavior. People would emulate me. Sarvashaha at the end, in all manners. Parta o Arjuna, if I were consistently not to be engaged in the act of Loka Sangraha, then other people would do similarly. They would fail to, you know, if Sri Krishna were not that role model, engaged in loka sangraha, then others would be less inclined to be engaged in loka sangraha. They would lose that wonderful role model. If only we had such a role model in modern times. Sri Krishna concludes this idea in the next verse. Utsi de yuri me loka Utsi de yuri me loka Nakur yam kar machedaham Nakur yam kar machedaham Sankarasya chakar tasyam Sankarasya chakar tasyam Upahan yami ma prajaha Upahan yami ma prajaha Yes. Okay. In the second line, chait, if, if aham, I, nakuryam karma, if nakuryam, if I were not to perform karma, if I were not to engage in karma, if I were not to engage in loka sangraha, helping other people, then what would be the consequence? Well, in fact, not, there would be several consequences. Not merely would he cease to be a role model, but in the absence of Sri Krishna's loka sangraha, his blessing the people he came to help, then what would be the consequence? In the first line, lokaha, people, utsi ime, uh, you have to break apart the words, utsi de yur ime, ime lokaha, all these people, you can imagine Sri Krishna maybe waving his hand across the battlefield, both sides, 
the Pandavas and the Kauravas, the Melo, Kaha, all these people, Utside Yuhu, they would sink down. They would perish, you could paraphrase that. So if I were not, Sri Krishna says in the first half, if I were not to be engaged in Loka Sangraha, then all these people would perish. Remember, as an avatara, he took a human form <coughs> specifically for the sake of restoring dharma, for the sake of blessing good people, for the sake of punishing the not so good people. So if he fail to be engaged in those activities, what would be the consequence? Not only that, in the third line he says, he says, Sankarasya cha kartasyam. Kartasyam, I would be the agent, the agent of what? Sankarasya of confusion. I would be the agent of confusion, having taken human form for the sake of helping people and then not helping people. He is an avatara, he is expected to be engaged in loka sangraha, and those who know him as an avatara expect him to be that loka sangraha. If he failed to follow dharma by helping other people, he would sow confusion and worse, im, in the last line, imaha prajaha, these people, what a strong word he says, upahanyam, I would destroy. I would destroy these people if he failed to engage in loka sangraha. So he's talking about the consequence, not merely of failing to be a good role model, but the consequence of not fulfilling his dharma as an avatara. There's an interesting perspective, I'll just speak for a few moments on, on avatara. And avatara has karma. Now, we said before, Sri Krishna is enlightened, he's an avatara, he is a form of Vishnu. He is not a human being like you and me. So he doesn't possess karma of his own making. He's enlightened. An enlightened person is, is free from karma. He is not burdened with karma of his own making. On the other hand, his life is the result of karma, not his karma, our karmas. There's a wonderful teaching. I think it may come from the Bhagavata Purana, but I'm not sure. A wonderful teaching that says that an avatara takes birth as a result of the good karmas of so many people in the world. Imagine if millions and millions of good people in the world were suffering terribly and praying to Lord Vishnu, help us, help us, help us. You can imagine the power of, these, of the prayers of these millions of pious people, the p their prayers having a karmic effect. And the karmic effect is to cause Lord Vishnu to take an avatara, in this case as, as Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna has karma, so to speak. Not that, again, he doesn't have personal karma. His birth is the result not of his own karma, his birth is a result of our karma. The, your life is a result of your karma, and therefore in your lifetime you have to exhaust those karmas with which you were born. Sri Krishna's life is a result not of his own personal karmas, but of all of our karmas, and therefore hi, in his lifetime he has to exhaust all those karmas and all of his karma, all of those karmas will be exhausted. How? By performing loka sangraha. Therefore, he was, he was present on the battlefield 
advising Arjuna all the way through the Mahabharata war and later he is engaged in Loka Sangraha and maybe the most obvious instance of Lord Krishna blessing all of mankind is the fact that his words recorded in the Bhagavad Gita have come to bless us all generation after generation. So this dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the Mahabharata excerpted in the form of the uh, Bhagavad Gita, these words of Lord Krishna are his loka sangraha, blessing us all. And he says, he says, if I didn't do anything sankarasya kartasyam, I would be the source of confusion. Well, if he didn't have this conversation with Arjuna, we wouldn't have a Bhagavad Gita to study and how much more confusion we would have if we didn't have Sri Krishna's words in the form of, of uh, Bhagavad Gita. This Bhagavad Gita then is maybe the best example of Sri Krishna's Loka Sangraha, his actions for the welfare of all people. Okay. Yeah, we have time. We'll continue. <coughs> Just move this note. Good. <coughs> okay. Sakta Karmanya Vidwan so Sakta Karmanya Vidwan so Yatha Kurvanti Bharata Yatha Kurvanti Bharata Kuryad Vidvams Tata Saktash Kuryad Vidvams Tata Saktash Chikir Shur Chikir Shuloka Sangraham Chikir Shuloka Sangraham Chikir Shur Loka Sangraham Okay. For our Sanskrit students, you start with the words yata avidvansaha. Yata, just like avidvansaha, the ignorant. And in the third line, tata, in the same way, vidvan, the wise. So we're getting a metaphor here. Just like the ignorant people do this and that and the other thing, in the same way the wise people should do something else. This is a structure of the verse. So start in the second line. Yat, yatha kurvanti Bharata o Arjuna, he addresses, o descendant of King Bharat, o Bharata o Arjuna, yatha, just as, and pick up that word at the end of the first line, a vidwan saha. You have to break the words apart. Karmani a vidwan saha. So yata, just as a vidwan saha, unenlightened people, the ignorant people, just as those ignorant people, kurvanti, they act. And how do they act? They act being back in the second, in the first line, saktaha, attached, karmani, to their actions. The ignorant people act with attachment to their actions. And let's remember exactly what attachment means. Attachment means emotional dependence. Emotional dependence means you need the outcome of, a, of your actions to be suitable for you, you are driven by raga and dvesha. Driven by raga, you chase after what you want because you're emotionally dependent on getting that result. Or dvesha, you're, you're repulsed, you're driven to run away from someone or something. Why you are emotionally attached you are emotionally dependent on avoiding something or another. So this is emotional. Emotional dependence is what we mean by sangha here. Sangha and asakti are the two words that we use for attachment. Here, sakta. 
one who is attached. So th those people who are saktaha karmani, attached to actions, emotionally dependent on actions, yatha kurvanti avidvansaha, just as those ignorant people act, now going down into the second line, a third, a second half, third line. Tata, in the same way, Vidvan, the wise one, who is asaktaha, at the end of the f s third line, the wise one who is asaktaha, unattached. Notice the contrast. The first half of the verse is talking about the ignorant people who act with attachment, and here, in the second half, he's talking about Vidvan, the wise person, who is asaktaha, free from attachment. And what should that, that wise person do? Kuryat, that wise person should act. Chikirshuhu, being desirous of lokasangraham. There's our beautiful word again. Sangraha welfare, loka, of the people. That wise person should act for the sake of the welfare of all people. So notice the contrast of, of the two halves of the verse. The first half of the verse talks about the attitude of a karmi. The karmi, as we described in, a, in last week's class, is one who is driven by raga dvesha, driven by emotional dependence, driven by, by this attachment to get what you want and avoid what you don't want. And here Sri Krishna gives, it's actually a, a counterexample. Unlike, un, unlike the ignorant people who are driven by attachment, unlike them, a wise person who is free from attachment should act not driven by raga dvesha, but instead should act chikir shuhu, having the desire for, having a desire, but a desire not for your own personal agenda, a desire for, for, for what? Loka sangraham, for helping others. By the way, chikirshuhu is actually called a desiderative in Sanskrit. It means having a desire. A karma yogi has a desire. Yeah. <laughs> a karma yogi has a desire, a desire to, in fact, a twofold desire. A desire for spiritual growth and a desire to help others. A desire to follow dharma having used one's willpower to set aside your personal agenda, the enlightened, the uh, karma yogi will then use the willpower to follow dharma. We can say that the, the whereas the, the, uh, the ignorant people driven by attachment want to fulfill their worldly desires, here, the, and we can take this in two levels, the karma yogi wants to transcend worldly desires, break free from raga dvesha, and does so by using free will to set aside raga dvesha and act instead to follow dharma, and following dharma is expressed here as loka sangraha, caring for others. So the, the vidwan, that wise karma yogi, should act with it, would act with a desire to help others. And this is, this is a message for, uh, a message for Arjuna. Oh, Sri Krishna is addressing Arjuna and, and addressing all of us. That we are mature enough to rise above the level of being dragged about by our desires, dragged about by raga dvesha. We're mature enough to come out of that. It's like 
the behavior of animals, like I described in a prior class, were mature enough to, to come above, to rise above that level and to use our will to set aside our own selfish agendas and instead act to follow dharma, act to help others, which not only helps others, got a twofold result. You not only help others, but you f continue on your spiritual path, breaking free from raga dvesha, leading to the attainment of enlightenment. That's the ultimate goal of karma yoga. We'll see one more verse which finishes this uh, topic. Na buddhi bhedam janayet, na buddhi bhedam janayet, agnanam karma sanginam, agnanam karma sanginam, joshayet sarva karmani, joshayet sarva karmani, vidvan yukta samachara, vidvan yukta Samachara. So, remembering that Arjuna is our role model, not our role model, but role model of his time and place for all those gathered on the battlefield. He is a role model. If he were to leave that battlefield, what message would it convey? A very negative message. That's why Sri Krishna says here, Na buddhi bhedam janayet. You need the subject of the sentence, which is way down in the final line. Vidvan, a wise person, who is yuktaha, who is mature. You can take it as mature here. A disciplined person. So a disciplined, mature, wise person. What about that wise person? I'll go back up to the top. Na janayet should not cause buddhi bhedam. Buddhi bheda me means literally difference. Buddhi bheda means a disturbance in your buddhi, a disturbance in your thinking. Simply put, confusion. So an, an, a wise person should not cause confusion. Confusion for, for whom? Ajnanam, for those who are ignorant. Karma sanginam, for those who are attached to the results of their deeds. Referring to the pr first half of the prior verse. So a wise person should not cause confusion for those who are ignorant, those who are still trapped by their raga dvesha. And on the other hand, vidvan, yuktaha, those wise people who are mature, what should they do? Joshayet, in the third line. They should encourage joshayet. They should encourage sarva karmani, all deeds, all actions. They should encourage the perform they should encourage the ignorant people to be engaged in all actions specifically they should in encourage them to be engaged in actions by following dharma in fact he says here in the last very last word vidvan yuktaha samacharan the wise person samacharan acting properly and that's a key word here through acting properly, which means what? Through following dharma, through performing loka sangraha, by helping others, the wise ones should act as a role model to encourage others who are not so wise, who are not so mature. The wise person should act as a role model to encourage them to be engaged in actions. Now, this verse actually has a second meaning, a second issue that it addresses. And the, the 
So an enlightened person, remember Sri Krishna says, I have nothing here to do. There's nothing for me to accomplish. So suppose an enlightened person says, there's nothing for me to, to accomplish. I'm enlightened, I'm perfectly content, I'm perfectly fulfilled, therefore I'm just going to sit here. There's nothing I need to do. So why should I do anything at all? I'll just sit here and I'll, I'll wait for you to give me some food or some tea. You can take care of me, but I'm not going to engage in any action. That would be a lousy, pardon my American English, that would be a lousy role model. What a poor role model that would be. It would sow confusion, buddhi bhedam. It would confuse the unenlightened people by not being engaged in action at all and specifically by not being engaged in acts of dharma, by not performing loka sangraham, by helping others. Now, the example of this, in, in fact, the, com the uh, Madhusudana, the commentary that I've been looking at, he makes a very interesting observation. And he actually uh, quotes the Yoga Vasishta and says, S suppose there is someone who teaches sarvam brahma iti uh, yo vadet, a person who would teach everything is brahman, sarvam brahma. So an enlightened person who says everything is brahman. Now if everything is brahman, why bother going to work? <laughs> why bother taking care of your family? It's all mitya, to use our Vedantic terms. It's not real. It's all false. The entire world is false in a manner of speaking. So sarvam brahma, everything is brahman. The world is false. And if that were to be, so here the quotation Madhusudana uh, gives, says, sarvam brahmheti yovadet, one who were to teach this, highest teaching of Vedanta, everything is Brahman, teach this to whom? Ajnanasya ardha prabuddhasya. To teach this to Ajnanasya, to people who are not enlightened, ardha prabuddhasya, or who are half enlightened. Our nice, nice expression. To the ignorant, or to the half-enlightened, if you were to preach, everything is Brahman, therefore you need not do anything. This is a real abuse of spiritual teachings. So those who are not yet fully enlightened, they should be encouraged to act. That's what Sri Krishna says here in the third line. Joshayet, they should be encouraged, sarva karmani, to be engaged in all kinds of actions, dharmic actions, especially loka sangraha, helping, helping others. Anyway, the, qu the quotation uh, the commentator gives is, if you, I'll paraphrase it, if you, if, if you declare to those who are unenlightened or half enlightened, if you declare that everything is Brahman, therefore their action is meaningless, you need not act. The quotation concludes, such a person who preaches that will certainly go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> is the quotation, that's actually sourced in the, um, in the Yoga Vasishta, another, another text. So he, the commentator, makes a very strong statement about not causing confusion for those who are still attached to worldly, uh, worldly activities. They have to be gradually led out. We said to rise above that, that uh, being, to rise above being trapped by Raga Dvesha. It takes time and effort to rise above that state of bondage to Raga Dvesha. It has to be done gradually with great care. It can't be done by merely saying, saying, 
Sarvam Brahma, everything is, is Brahman and the world is Mithya. That's not a proper teaching. The commentator criticizes it here and Sri Krishna says that people should be encouraged to be engaged in Loka Sangraha. We'll stop here. Oh, uh, my note here. Uh, this coming Friday is Guru Purnima. Guru Purnima is a date where, where we celebrate all of our gurus, all of our beloved teachers. And we usually have a nice celebration here at our ashram. Unfortunately, we're still closed down because of the pandemic, so we won't be able to celebrate. At the same time, it would be nice to do something in, uh, to celebrate uh, Guru Purnima. So in celebration of Guru Purnima, I've prepared a very beautiful uh, video. A video that describes the glory of the Guru. And the glory of the Guru is described in the 108 names of Guru. So in this video, it was very beautiful, little artistic. I tried to make it a little artistic. Uh, a presentation of the 108 names of Guru, which are chanted and with meanings given. So each meaning praises the Guru and in a prayerful, uh, in a prayerful manner. We'll publish that, uh, that video on Friday in honor of, uh, in, in, in celebration of uh, Guru Purnima. Okay. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschadukha Bhagbaveta Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityor Mahamrathangamaya Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat <laughs>